Hello everyone, uh, Dr. Mungli here. In this video, I will be explaining you about prehepatic, hepatic and uh, post-hepatic jaundice. Mainly in this video, I will be concentrating on biochemical aspects of prehepatic, hepatic and post-hepatic jaundice. I won't be going into details about different disorders that are leading to prehepatic, hepatic and post-hepatic jaundice. So it is mainly on biochemical uh, concepts and uh, how to interpret the values or uh, some of the findings that you are going to see here in three types of jaundice. Now before we get into prehepatic, hepatic and uh, post-hepatic jaundice, so let me explain to you about uh, normal bilirubin metabolism especially when it comes to liver. As you all know hemoglobin present in the red blood cell going to the spleen when the red blood cells are dying like senescent red blood cells are taken uh, taken to the red uh, spleen and in the spleen reticuloendothelial system so heme oxygenase enzyme is going to break down heme into biliverdin and biliverdin is further converted into bilirubin by biliverdin reductase enzyme now the bilirubin that is produced in the spleen, it is an unconjugated water insoluble bilirubin. And this unconjugated water insoluble bilirubin, it will be secreted by the spleen into the blood and in the blood it will be binding to albumin. Now albumin carry that unconjugated bilirubin and it will be given to hepatocytes. So that is what is written here. So unconjugated bilirubin, normal unconjugated bilirubin, it is denoted as 1 plus. Now this unconjugated bilirubin, it will undergo conjugation process in the liver done by UDP glucuronosyl transferase 1A1 enzyme, which is also referred as UGT1A1. Now with the help of UGT1A1, unconjugated bilirubin is conjugated and that will be secreted out of the liver into the biliary canal eye and then into the common bile duct. Now in the common bile duct as it is shown here you have 1 plus conjugated bilirubin. Now this 1 plus conjugated bilirubin getting into the intestine especially in the terminal part of ileum and also in the proximal part of colon the bacteria which are synthesizing beta glucuronidase enzymes so these beta glucuronidase enzymes they are going to unconjugate conjugated bilirubin and will be converting into unconjugated bilirubin and furthermore unconjugated bilirubin will be converted to urobilinogen so you see 1 plus urobilinogen 80 to 90 percent of this 1 plus urobilinogen it will be excreted in the feces and that is in the stool and the normal color of the stool that you see here yellowish color and that's because of presence of urobilinogen which is converting into urobilin. Now 10 to 20 percent of urobilinogen made in the intestine it will be taken back to the liver by enterohepatic circulation. And in that, so 10 to 20 percent is coming to the liver here and that will be recycled. Now in that, less than 3 milligram of urobilinogen, it escapes hepatic uptake and it gets into systemic circulation. And in the systemic circulation, it will be filtered by the glomerulus and then it will get into urine. And that's why you see 1 plus urob urobilinogen in the urine and that is responsible for yellow color of a normal urine sample because urobilinogen is converted to into urobilin molecule. Note that if you look at the serum values here, so the serum values is showing that conjugated bilirubin is less than 20% of total bilirubin. Normally total bilirubin consists of conjugated bilirubin and unconjugated bilirubin. Conjugated bilirubin is less than 20%, unconjugated bilirubin is more than 80%. Now, Conjugated bilirubin that you see here in the serum is because of normal hepatocyte turnover. And also note the other uh, serum values that are mentioned here that is AST, ALT, ALP and GGT. AST is aspartate transaminase, ALT alanine transaminase, ALP alkaline phosphatase, GGT is 
gamma glutamyl transpeptidase all these are normal because we are looking at normal metabolism and when the conjugated bilirubin is less than 20% in the serum so you don't find any conjugated bilirubin in the urine because it will be so undetectable in the urine so our normal tests they don't detect conjugated bilirubin under normal circumstances in the urine so normal color of urine is because of urobilinogen 1 plus normal color of stool is because of 1 plus urobilinogen in the stool so you have 1 plus unconjugated bilirubin means you have 1 plus conjugated bilirubin serum values conjugated bilirubin less than 20 percent towards the normal now let's move on to see what happens in prehepatic jaundice so the one that i'm going to exp ex that i'm explaining now is prehepatic jaundice it means increase in the bilirubin levels in the blood so normally bilirubin levels when it is exceed means so normal bilirubin level is total bilirubin is 0 0.3 to 1.3 milligram per deciliter Whenever bilirubin levels exceeds more than 2.5 mg per deciliter, we call that as jaundice. Now jaundice can be classified into prehepatic means that any pathology before the liver. Then we have hepatic jaundice and that is pathology is within the liver and post hepatic that is pathology will be after the liver. So if I need to de uh, denote it here in the figure, so any problem before here before the liver and that is referred as prehepatic jaundice anything that is before the liver so anything within the liver any pathology within the liver and that is referred as hepatic jaundice and any pathology after the liver and that is referred as post hepatic jaundice anyway so now what we are dealing with here is the Prehepatic jaundice and one of the cause for prehepatic jaundice is extravascular hemolysis and that is red blood cell destruction. So whenever there is a, any kind of hemolytic anemia going on, hemolytic anemia, any kind of hemolytic anemia where increased number of red blood cells are undergoing lysis, red blood cells lysis, it means there is a heavy load on spleen. So where the spleen is converting heme into bilirubin and that is unconjugated bilirubin. So unconjugated bilirubin will be brought to the liver for conjugation process. Now in the liver, so you have a UGT1A1 enzyme which is going to conjugate unconjugated bilirubin into conjugated bilirubin. So it will be working at a maximum rate. That's why 2 plus UCB here that is increase unconjugated bilirubin accordingly it is going to increase conjugated bilirubin but is but that is present in the common bile duct. Now 2 plus con conjugated bilirubin gets into the bowel bacteria is going to act on this 2 plus conjugated bilirubin and will produce 2 plus urobilinogen molecule. Now in this 80 to 90 percent of this 2 plus urobilinogen is excreted in the stool it means the stool has got high levels of urobilinogen now that's why it is uh, dark colored so that is why you can see here compared to the previous uh, figure so you see dark colored stool in prehepatic jaundice now 10 to 20 percent of this increased urobilinogen is reabsorbed back into the liver because liver is doing fine here we are not dealing with hepatic jaundice and in that accordingly less than 3 milligram so it means less than 3 percent there so more and more urobilinogen is also found in the urine so you see urobilinogen is 2 plus so in uh, prehepatic jaundice you see dark colored urine also so you see dark, uh, dark colored stool and dark colored urine in prehepatic jaundice that's because of increased urobilinogen now look at the serum values so it is all about hemolysis, hemolytic anemia. So conjugated bilirubin is still fine. So it is less than 2%, 20% of total. AST is just 1 plus increased and that's because this AST is coming from red blood cells. Whereas the liver enzymes that is al alkaline, uh, sorry, alanine transaminase and the ductular enzymes, alkaline phosphatase, gamma glutamyl transpeptidase, they are all normal. So this is what you are going to see in the prehepatic jaundice. 
and usually hemolytic anemia uh, uh, leading to prehepatic jaundice and total bilirubin there usually it will be less than 5 mg per deciliter it do not exceed uh, more than 5 mg per deciliter and that is seen in hemolytic anemias so any jaundice where the total bilirubin unconjugated bilirubin exceeding more than 5 mg per deciliter you need to think about coexisting hepatocellular pattern there. Now let's move on to see hepatic jaundice. Now in the hepatic jaundice, so hepatic jaundice is seen in most of these hepatitis. So hepatitis C, it is inflammation of the hepatocytes. So we have different types of hepatitis. You can say hepatitis A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So you can say uh, see hepatitis from A to H. And also you can see cirrhosis, alcoholic hepatitis and other kinds of viral hepatitis. So all these kinds of hepatitis, so they will be inflaming the hepatocyte membrane or hepatocyte is inflamed. That is why this kind of jaundice is referred as hepatic jaundice. Now what happens here? Because the hepatocyte is inflamed, so unconjugated bilirubin is not handled properly. So all the unconjugated bilirubin that is coming here, so it may not be conjugated completely so that's why some of the unconjugated bilirubin it can regurgitate back into the blood that's why you can see there are two plus unconjugated bilirubin now whatever the conjugation that is going on in the inflamed hepatocyte so that is coming into the common bile duct and in the common bile duct so from there it is getting into the intestine and in that intestine bacteria are going to act on that and you get one plus urobilinogen and the 80 to 90 percent of it is getting into the stool and you get a normal colored stool in he uh, hepatic jaundice now 10 to 20 uh, eight, uh, in the eight, 10 to 20 percent here it will be reabsorbed back but since your hepatocyte is inflamed so it is not going to take up this 10 to 20 percent of urobilinogen most of it will be escaping into the systemic circulation from there it will be filtered by the glomerulus that's why in unconjugated means urobilinogen here it is 2 plus in urine that's because so not much of the urobilinogen that is undergoing enterohepatic circulation is taken up by the liver so it is escaping uh, hepatic uptake and getting into systemic circulation and from there it is filtered by the glomerulus that's why you see UBG 2 plus and also you can note that since the hepatocytes are inflamed here that is why there is a leakage of conjugated bilirubin from the hepatocyte into the blood that's why you can see conjugated bilirubin is now between contributing between 20 to 50 percent of total bilirubin now since the conjugated bilirubin has exceeded more than 20 percent of total so that conjugated bilirubin is now filtered by the kidney that is why you see presence of conjugated bilirubin in the urine. So in the hepatocellular pattern or hepatic jaundice, we are dealing with hepatic jaundice. So in the hepatic jaundice, so you will see normal colored stool whereas dark colored urine. And the dark colored urine is because of both presence of urobilinogen and conjugated bilirubin in the urine. Now the serum values, if you look at the serum value, so the liver enzymes are elevated. Pay attention to the liver enzymes here, that is AST 2 plus and alkaline, sorry, alanine transaminase is 3 plus. Because so in all viral hepatitis and other hepatitis, so AST and ALT, if you look at that, so ALT over AST ratio is more than 1. Okay. Whereas especially in the alcoholic hepatitis, so you will see the reverse in the ratio that is there will be more elevation of AST than ALT. So it will be AST is much more than ALT. So if you look at ALT AST ratio there means you are writing ALT on top and AST below and that will be less than 1. Okay. And that's what you are going to see in alcoholic hepatitis. Why? Because alcohol which is metabolized to acetaldehyde acetaldehyde damages the mitochondrial membrane and uh, it releases AST present in the matrix of mitochondria and that is why there will be increase in the level of AST in alcoholic hepatitis compared to ALT. Now 
alkaline phosphatase and gamma glutamyl transpeptidase these are the ductal or enzymes that's why there you know uh, we are dealing with hepatic jaundice here so the ducts are not much affected that's why you see just 1 plus alp and ggt so this is what you are going to see in the hepatocellular jaundice or hepatic jaundice so in the hepatic jaundice you see elevation of both conjugated and unconjugated bilirubin as you can see conjugated is elevated and unconjugated elevated both so it is a combined hyperbilirubinemia and then you see normal colored stool and dark colored urine and then you see the hepatic enzymes are elevated whereas ductal or enzymes are not elevated that much coming with the post hepatic jaundice now we are dealing with the post hepatic jaundice post hepatic jaundice so as i already told you so it is about after the liver any pathology that is after the liver so one of the example that i am showing you here to explain post hepatic jaundice is there is obstruction to the common bile duct that's where i have basically made a stone or something being obstructing here to the common bile duct or it can be called a tumor in the head of the pancreas which is blocking the common bile duct completely or uh, blocking the ample of water there okay so now when there is obstruct, uh, obstruction to the common bile duct, so the conjugated bilirubin that is coming into the common bile duct is there is no way to go to it because there is a complete obstruction. So conjugated bilirubin elevated in the common bile duct and then it will regurgitate back into the blood and also it will regurgitate into the liver hepatocyte. So because of this over a period of time what happens there can be leakage of this conjugated bilirubin. Uh, because of the inflammation of the hepatocyte so you see conjugated bilirubin will be more than 50 percent to the total bilirubin now normally if you remember total bil conjugated bilirubin contributes to less than 20 percent to the total bilirubin so in obstructive jaundice or post hepatic jaundice you see tot conjugated bilirubin contributing more than 50 percent to the total bilirubin and that's because there is obstruction to the common bile duct here now the conjugated bilirubin is not there in the intestine so that is why there is no urobilinogen formation as you can see here so no urobilinogen formed because there is no conjugated bilirubin because of that so since there is no urobilinogen so color of the stool is clay colored it is almost colorless it is called called as clay colored stool because there is no urobilinogen formed and also no enterohepatic circulation that is why so urobilinogen is not found in the urine also you can see zero urobilinogen in the urine is zero now conjugated bilirubin is exceeded more than 50 percent of total so it's a water soluble bilirubin that's why it is filtered by the glomerulus and you see elevation of conjugated bilirubin in the urine so urine color is dark here which is also called as tea colored urine dark colored urine or tea colored urine so it means in obstructive jaundice or hepatic jaundice post hepatic jaundice stool color is clay colored stool and uh, urine color is dark color or tea colored urine so clay colored stool tea colored urine it gives you post hepatic jaundice now yeah, it gives you an idea about post hepatic jaundice now the serum values since the hepatocytes are not primarily affected here so that is why ast and alt are one plus now the ducts are affected so ductal or enzymes that is alkaline phosphatase three plus and gamma glutamyl transpeptidase is three plus it means alp is elevated out of proportion to alt here so elevation of alkaline phosphatase out of proportion to alanine transaminase it's an indicator of post hepatic jaundice so in post hepatic jaundice conjugated bilirubin is predominantly elevated alp is elevated in out, out of proportion to alp sorry alt alp that is alkaline phosphatase elevated out of proportion to alanine transaminase and the color of stool is clay and the color of urine is tea color or dark colored urine and also serum cholesterol will be elevated serum bile acids bile salts will be elevated and they can accumulate in the tissues you can give uh, that will give rise to xanthomas 
and presence of uh, excess bile acids bile salts in the blood can give rise to pruritus that is itching all over the body so pruritus with the jaundice it is an indication of obstructive pathology and that is indication of post hepatic jaundice so these are some of the points about normal bilirubin metabolism in the liver not really in detail and my because my intention is to explain pre hepatic post hepatic and po, uh, hepatic jaundice so i explained to you about pre hepatic jaundice hepatic jaundice and post hepatic jaundice i hope uh, this video has helped you uh, in understanding or making a difference differentiating points between pre hepatic hepatic and post hepatic jaundice so i may come up with another video where i will be explaining about different disorders that can give rise to pre hepatic hepatic and post hepatic jaundice so thanks for watching and best wishes for whatever you do thank you and see you again in my next video till then take care